the tone of the campaign was a lot more negative than I think uh, political observers expected. And you said during the campaign that you don't get into the weeds on it, but how do, how do you think about it now? You know, um, I, I think it's been negative. Um, there's been a, a lot of negativity, even for the last two years since I became Premier. Um, the, the, the negativity against me started then. And, you know, it's continued. I, I don't like the negativity. I really don't. Um, but I will say, like, I, yeah, I don't get into the weeds on the campaign. But I certainly, I'm very, I'm very proud of the campaign that, that we ran. And, and Marnie did a great job. And there's so many people that helped out on that campaign. And I just want to thank them for what they did. And, um, you know, was there, you know, maybe a part of it that um, there were some unintended consequences where we hurt some people? You know, I don't, you know, you know I, I, I apologize for that because um, I, you know, it was not intended. What were the parts that you think hurt some people? Well, I think it was just the, the ad on, um, on the stand firm. And I, you know, I think that there were unintended consequences of that. And so I think, you know, I, we certainly did not want to, to hurt Manitobans that way. And so, um, you know, I, I apologize for that. I'm, I'm a leader of the party. I take responsibility for the campaign. I just want to go back to the unintended consequences. Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Well, I think there were people that were very upset, you know, with them and it, it hit them very emotionally. And, um, you know, I certainly did not ever, and none of us w had ever intended to, to hurt anybody. We were simply getting a message out about um, a certain issue and how difficult it was to make that decision. And, and that those are the difficult decisions that, you know, um, the new Premier's Desmet will, will need to make as well. So when Marnie or Barb or whomever it was in the campaign said, you know, we're going to campaign on the basis of our opposition to searching the landfill, did, did you or anyone push back against that and go, look, we're going to look, like, whether or not this is the right decision, we're going to look a little ghoulish here. Did anyone push back? I don't, I don't think we ran a campaign. Uh, just solely on that. We, we have our entire platform. If you actually look through that. Well, I'm not suggesting you ran, forgive me for jumping in. I, I'm not saying you ran your whole platform. I just meant that particular plank of it, though. No, I think all the way through, we were getting questions asked of us. And I think, you know, um, it was incumbent upon us to make sure that Manitobans knew where we stood on that and, uh, and you know, and, and ask, you know, my opponents where they stood on it as well. So... Candace Bergen said that she pushed back against that. Is is that accurate by your recollection? I don't, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't at every meeting. I don't, you know, I, I, I was really busy. They kept me very busy doing various things. And so I was focused on on that part. And, and again, you know, we will have our discussions internally about what took place and, uh, and, and have that out with, you know, the party and, and caucus. And we'll have those discussions there. I don't think... You know, I'm not certainly, I'm certainly not going to have those discussions in the media. Rochelle Squires said that the campaign didn't feel like the party she represented for seven and a half years. What do you think about her comments? Well, again, I, I think, um, I certainly, you know, believe that we need to have those discussions uh, in the party. Um, you know, if that's the way she feels and others feel that way, like we need to have those discussions and we will. There'll be policy conventions coming up. You know, there's going to be all sorts of things as we rebuild this this party. So um, I think it's 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 exciting in the future. Manitoba typically is a pretty moderate political culture. When Philman was in power, pretty moderate conservative. When Dewar is in power, pretty moderate New Democrat. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to the idea that the campaign made it look like the progressive conservatives were shifting further to the right? Well. You know, I, uh, I think you look at the budget that we brought in in the spring, and I would tell you that that is uh, very much who we are and what we're all about. And, uh, you know, during the campaign, we also made announcements out of on those things as well. And so, um, you know, uh, various campaigns are run differently. There's different things that you do and wedge issues and all of these things. What does the Progressive Conservative Party have to be going forward? I mean, ideologically. Does it need to continue to be a progressive conservative party? Does it need to move further to the right? Where do you think it should go? You're, you're going to be interim leader. You're going to help steer this. Where should the party be on that spectrum? I think the party needs to have that at a convention, those discussions at a convention. And we will continue, continue to do that. Uh, I don't think it's up for me to say. Uh, I think it's the party membership to, to have a, a significant say in that. 
what do you think of whether or not the party could be electable if it does go closer to either the federal party or, or, or even further? We need to get back to the grassroots of our, our party and who that, that is. There'll be a, a leadership race, there'll be more memberships that are sold. And then those, those members will have a say at a policy convention about where we want to go as a party. I don't think, you know, uh, me sitting here, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not up to me. <laughs> it's up to the membership of the party, the grassroots of the party. When you are opposition leader, you're going to be in question period. Yeah. Uh, and you've been on the <laughs> other side of that. You, how concerned are you that you'll be a lightning rod for the NDP? They'll be able to, you ask a question, they're going to talk about your record on health care, your record, yeah. you, the way the tone of the campaign. How, how concerned are you that you will, you may, you may not be as effective as an interim leader with more of a blank slate in, in that role? Look, I, I think we need stability in our party right now, and uh, you know, I, I, I think it's the best thing for me to stay on in this role, role right now, to see it through uh, to, a, to a new leader. Um, I believe I, I do have the, the confidence of our caucus. Now, I gotta say, the Heather Stephenson that I've observed over the years <laughs> yeah. was the Heather Stephenson who issued that concession speech on election mm -hmm. night. The Heather Stephenson I saw between August 11th and October 2nd sometimes didn't really seem like you. Did you feel you were acting during the campaign? You know, there were times where it was a little uncomfortable. I'm not a combative person, and I think that's what you're talking about. And, and uh, so I think sometimes the, you know, we had to take a different tone. We're fighting for Manitobans, and we are fighting for Manitobans. There's no question. But I think, you know, I, I take a conciliatory approach to things. I try and work with others. And, and you know, sometimes I would say that, you know, uh, that didn't come across that way in the campaign. And, uh, um, but I feel that uh, I did everything I could um, to make sure that um, we delivered for, for Manitobans and, um, you know, again, 42% of the population or of the, you know, of those that voted supported us.